The arrival of the most giant, powerful rocket in the history of NASA, which sent a space probe speeding towards the moon, marked the beginning of a new era of space research. After a number of setbacks, the autonomous Artemis I mission was finally sent into space on November 16th as part of a sequence of operations that would symbolize NASA's return to the lunar surface. After only two years, the spacecraft identified as Artemis II will be able to carry people into lunar orbit. The goal of Artemis III mission is to bring people back to the moon, where they'll change the course of history when they become the first women and people of color to put foot on the lunar surface. There's a widespread uncertainty among industry professionals over the viability of completing this operation by 2025 as scheduled. Although the timeline may have some margin for error, they are confident that Artemis will move forward. Since the Apollo program was canceled almost half a century ago in 1972, there has not been a significant effort to send humans into the depths of space. Here in this video, we'll talk about NASA's groundbreaking finding of the exoplanet Artemis I. Stay with us to the end of the video, there's a lot of information to be revealed. The Artemis mission is divided into a few different stages, of which the initial phase is Artemis I, which aims to transport people to the moon. In 1972, during a mission of Apollo 17, Eugene Cernan left his last footsteps on the moon. This year marks the 50th anniversary of those footprints. Since then, much progress has been made and 2022 will commemorate this milestone. When the first technical handheld calculator was built that year, the Apollo researchers used it to navigate aircraft safely to the moon. These days, however, we carry a more computational power than was available that year. At long last, people are beginning to make preparations to leave low Earth orbit. As a result, only about a dozen individuals have achieved astronaut status, all white men. It won't be long before the prestigious ranks of moonwalkers are joined by the first women and persons of color to accomplish this feat. This accomplishment is a direct result of NASA's Artemis project, which aims to examine a significantly larger portion of the lunar surface than has ever been done. In the year 2025, we will be able to observe astronauts once again walking on the surface of the moon, thanks to the advancements made from the grainy black and white television recordings of the 1960s. They might inspire next generations of people who dream of becoming astronauts to reach for the stars and become role models for them. However, a completely new launch procedure and a little bit of practice will be necessary to perform this subsequent moonshot. The Massive Space Launch System, or SLS, rocket that NASA developed will have its maiden voyage atop an unmanned Artemis I probe. In approximately four weeks, the Orion capsule will complete a revolution around the moon, propelled by the latest mega rocket. The Artemis II mission is scheduled to launch in 2024, and if everything goes according to plan, it will carry astronauts on a trip around the moon and back again. The Artemis III mission will land men on the moon in the vicinity of the South Pole by using SpaceX's Starship. This momentous flight is scheduled to take place sometime between the year 2025 and 2026. The Orion spacecraft will be driven through Earth's atmosphere by two huge rocket boosters and a primary stage that contains 733,000 gallons of fuel. After that, the SLS's upper stage, the ICPS, will fire it up to propel Orion in the direction of the Moon. When the Integrated Cargo Payload System, or ICPS, is enabled, it will play a supporting role, releasing 10 tiny CubeSats that are now traveling shotguns on Artemis I. The BioSentinel satellite is among these extremely small satellites, and its mission is to carry yeast specimens past low Earth orbit. To improve the safety of astronauts participating in future Artemis trips, the objective is to acquire as much information as possible regarding radiation and its impact on living beings. After being released from the ICPS, Orion will be propelled and fueled by the European Service Module, operated by the European Space Agency, or ESA. The anticipated duration of Artemis I's absence is between 26 and 42 days. Orion will take approximately one to two weeks to arrive at the moon, at which point it will do a close flyby of the satellite and use the moon's gravity to send itself into a distant retrograde orbit. When a planet is retrograde, its orbit all around the moon might move in the opposite direction of its rotation. This will cause the moon to appear to move in the wrong direction. During Orion's time in that orbit, 16 to 29 days will go by. After that, it will execute a U-turn 
and begin heading back to the moon to receive a second dose of energy that will enable it to return to Earth in 19 days or less. Although Artemis 1 won't be transporting any passengers, it still has an exceptional team. The commander's chair will be occupied by a mannequin named Commander Moonkin Campos. This dummy will be protected from radiation by a suit called the Orion Crew Survival System. Two radiation detectors would take readings throughout the journey to monitor the amounts of radiation. Campos is the new Moonkin's name, and it was chosen to honor Arturo Campos, an electronics engineer responsible for ensuring the safe arrival of the Apollo 13 team back to Earth. Because of the research carried out by the German space industry, Campos will be accompanied aboard Orion by two female explorers, who are only virtual representations. It has been determined that one of the models, Zohar, will be outfitted with a STEMRAD radiation protection vest to experiment. The other one, Helga, will have to face the dangers of the outside world without any protection. In addition to securing the dummies, the primary objective is to evaluate how effectively they function in an atmosphere devoid of gravity. As stated in the announcement made by NASA, they will be transporting a zero-gravity indicator in the shape of a stuffed Snoopy doll dressed in the iconic orange spacesuit worn by NASA. The lunar craft of the Apollo 10 mission was finally given the name Snoopy, following the long-standing association that the comic strip figure had with the moon. Everyone's favorite sheep from the stop-motion animation Sean will also be a part of the Team Artemis 1. The European Space Agency orchestrated the journey of the stuffed animal representation of a clever Shropshire sheep to the moon on the Orion probe. In addition, the ESA built the service module responsible for supplying the appropriate amount of energy during the journey. Throughout the more than 20 years that these numerous academics have spent focusing on this project, they have encountered various obstacles. It has been challenging to continue the momentum, even though there have been four successive administrations. The United States Human Spacecraft Scheme has been transformed over the ages by the presidents of Bush, Obama, Trump, and Biden, with the firm's objective switching to the moon, to a meteor, then back to the moon. This is due to the fact the United States Human Spaceflight Scheme is funded by the United States government. There has also been some flexibility built into the Artemis timeframe. For example, President Trump's initial proposal called for the first human crewed lunar landing to take place in the year 2024. There is no shortage of people who believe that the Artemis project is a waste of resources and time because it intends to return humans to the moon. Some people think there is no sense in traveling back to the moon because humans have already sent an army of unmanned spacecraft to both orbits and gone to the moon's surface. Following the success of Artemis 1 operation, the Artemis 2 mission, which is scheduled to take humans on a trip around the moon and back again in 2024, will be launched. Following that, as a component of the Artemis 3 project, explorers will make a soft landing close to the lunar south pole in either 2025 or 26. One day, spaceships delivering supplies and people may fill the zone between Earth and the moon. Jeff Bezos, the creator of Amazon and Blue Origin, has put out the idea of humanity establishing a sustained industrial foothold on the moon. According to his theory, doing so would make more room for people to live on Earth. It would move the technology that contributes to the pollutions of the atmosphere to locations where there are hardly any atmosphere. There is a consensus among professionals that the moon would be an excellent staging area for exploration expeditions to other planets within the solar system. The sheer enormity of the Space Launch Systems, or SLS, demonstrates how difficult it is to escape from Earth's gravitational effect. Because of the Moon's gravity is only six times that of Earth, evading its pull is a significantly less arduous task. In addition, significant amounts of water are found on the Moon. Because the chemical equation for oxygen is H2O, it implies that if there is water, there must also be a significant amount of the element. According to calculations made by researchers, the oxygen concentration on the moon's surface is enough to sustain the lives of 8 billion people for 100,000 years. Since oxygen gas has a potential as a rocket fuel, quarrying on the moon might one day result in the construction of gas stations that are accessible to spacecraft traveling between planets. These stations would serve as fuel stops. Because of this, it has been decided to establish Artemis Base Camp, close to the moon's south pole. At this point, there is no reason for anyone to have any concerns regarding the accessibility of water there. Furthermore, the moon's south pole is bathed in beneficial sunshine, as it is illuminated approximately 90% of the year. 
This contrasts the rest of the moon, which experienced two weeks of sun and two weeks of darkness. That is encouraging news in regard to the possibility of a solar-powered lunar base. It is feasible that one day rocket vessels would commonly refuel in the neighborhood of Artemis Base Camp before setting out for locations such as Mars or the asteroid belt. This is because that zone has an excess of both liquid and sunlight. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein is confident that taking human beings to the moon is essential to growing into an interstellar society. According to what he said, humanity needs to invest several years in orbit and on the moon's surface to establish operational capability for doing long-term work and supporting life distant from Earth until they bark on the maiden multi-year journey to Mars. Everything that they undertake is a move in the direction of getting back to their roots. When large stars, such as those in the Milky Way, die, they explode, distributing iron and calcium that constitute our blood and skeletons throughout the universe. This is how you get iron in your bloodstream and calcium in your bones. At some point, the atoms coalesced into conscious creatures that dreamed of exploring other star systems and possessed a technological prowess that built space rockets to the dimensions of cathedrals. Even though the release of Artemis 1 this year might seem like a relatively insignificant accomplishment, you shouldn't dismiss its importance. This may be regarded as a turning point in history when the man again places his sights on the moon. This may be recorded in history book. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section. Also at last, give this video a like. See you soon.